Hey guys, it's Tiffany Dean Cosplay here and today I just want to do a quick video. Uh, Spotlight was amazingly kind enough to send me some more of their gorgeous fabrics from the Yaya Han Cosplay Fabrics range. Um, so I just wanted to do a really, really quick review. Um, I apologise in advance if you start seeing like sweat dripping down my eyeballs or something. It's about 40 degrees Celsius here today. We have no air in the house, my car's aircon and is bad, no tin, it's just hot. Um, so aside from my own little pity party, I'll get straight into it, I won't try and make this video too long. Um, so the first <coughs> fabric I've got is the Scuba Hex, which hopefully, there we go, you can see here, it's the same pattern as the Super Hex, but it's more like a scuba knit type fabric. Um, so I've got it in the black obviously and it's actually it's nice fabric it's got a decent amount of of drape to it it does have stretch I think I'll lift it up high enough so it stretches quite nice actually doesn't really stretch this way probably minimal but I wouldn't really classify it as much of a stretch but it does have plenty of give this way so if you are planning on a bodysuit or anything for this just Keep that in mind if you are making it. Um, yeah, it's quite quite thick. Up against the light, I can see through it a little bit, but I've got direct sun right in front of me, so I'd probably expect that from most fabrics. Um, it's yeah, it's quite smooth. It feels slightly odd, like there's a coating of some kind on it. I don't know if there is. Um, it yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like a standard scuba knit. But this is the scuba hex fabric so there is there's so many things that you could use for this in the way of bodysuits with all the all the superheroes that are out at the moment villains whatever is whichever one you prefer out of the two or aliens anything that you want um the texture alone and i'd in white i think it would definitely take to dyes really well but given it is quite smooth i do think it would probably take to some fabric banks quite well just with it being dark you may not see it as much as you would like. So the next fabric I've got is the quilted pleather. So you can see here. So the quilted is just pretty much like a, a diamond or a square pattern, whichever way you kind of look at it. Um, I admit I did think the diamonds would be bigger than they are. But that being said, I actually don't mind it. Um, for me, I will be using this probably for a couple of projects. Um, those that may or may not be aware, I'm a part of a big PAX Australia Even Blade group, which those that follow Zach Fisher are just familiar with a lot of top name cosplayers. Um, it was a massive group for BlizzCon, so I'm lucky to be part of a group of that. And I'll be doing Lady Leodrin, I think you pronounce it. Her pants like quilted leather or pleather to me. So this is what I will definitely be using for that. Um, also Jacob Fry. Anybody doing a Assassin's Creed Syndicate cosplay? Jacob Fry, Femme Jacob, Dude Jacob, Crossover Jacob. It probably work for that, even though it's smaller than what his are. If you're doing your own take on it, this would be totally fine. Now, in regards to the stretch, it doesn't have as much stretch as I thought it would. Like the scuba hex, there's sort of next to no stretch one way, but not a bad amount the other way. Um, it's got almost like a, I don't know if you can see it right on the camera, it's like a felt like backing. So I imagine this would actually get really warm, so keep that in mind if you're going to do a bodysuit, pants, tops, you may get a bit warm, especially here in Australia, our summers, as you know today, get very, very warm, very, very quickly. Um, you really can't see through it much, the king direct sunlight, the, the only bit of light coming through is where the actual stitching lines are, which you'd expect because there's holes there. Uh, so yeah, I do think this would this would get very warm, but again, it's a nice soft fabric. It doesn't smell weird. Like the those who saw my last video will see that I kind of sniffed the ultra cream and things because they smell really really weird. 
this doesn't, which is even better. Um, so yeah, another gorgeous squishy fabric. So it, yeah, it is, it is quilted, so that's probably why it's a bit poofier, a bit squidgy, but yeah, amazing. And my massive fabric pile just fell off, for those that heard that. But moving on, uh, the next, and I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, so I apologise in advance for the really fabric savvy people who are probably cringing, it's the, the Dupini, Dupion, I really don't know how to say it, I'm sorry. This one is a polyester one, it's not the silk, so it's, um, it doesn't have that, I don't know what you call it, that crunchy look to it, which I actually kind of like. Um, it's probably not quite as drapey as I thought it would be, looking at Yaya's video, it looked really quite drapey. That being said, I still don't mind it, I think the colour, as you can see here, this is the yellow gold, I believe, uh, it's just amazing the way it catches the light is you really cannot fault the color the back of it if I can find an edge to fabric is pretty much just like a matte mattish version so you can see the front and the back there so you could do it either side it really wouldn't matter this is what I'll be using for my next version of Aloy which would be the Kaja Blaze on Heavy and those that have played the game will know that she has a yellow sash going around her belt. This is a perfect colour for it. I'll probably have to hand paint the little details that are on there. Those that have know what I do and zoom in really close on photo mode, you'll see there's a pattern on the fabric. So I'll probably end up painting that so I don't lose any integrity of this fabric. So for anybody doing any of anyone from any kind of Kaja tribe from Horizon Zero Dawn. This stuff, probably in any colour you can get it on, it's going to be perfect because even though it's a polyester and not natural silk and the Kaja's tribe like all their silks and so forth, it looks like their fabric suit with the way it just catches a light and it gets really bright and colourful. Uh, another thing that you could use this for is you probably actually could put it over armour builds. That one is really glued, that was weird. Anyway, um, so I do have another idea that I'll be using this for, depending how much I use for Aloy. So stay tuned on Facebook and Instagram in case I announce that. I'm not announcing it yet in case I don't, because I don't know how easy this is to get hold of. So yeah, I'll just use what I can for Aloy and then go on from there. Um, obviously there's no stretch whatsoever in this, so it'll probably be good for... Um, Corsets and things, skirts, bustles, sashes, belts, detail bits, you could cover armour with it. Um, but yeah, obviously if you're thinking bodysuits and so forth, you, you, got, you have no stretch, so you've gonna, you're going to have very little manoeuvrability if you're covering your entire body in this, which I don't blame you for wanting to because it is really, really fun. So that's it in the yellow and gold. And the next, which... I'm going to fail right now, I can tell you, at picking this up. There is so much of this stuff. This is the texture scales. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. So this is the texture scales in the bronze colour. Um, this stuff, I really didn't know what to expect. I did think the scales would be a little bit bigger, but I'm glad they're the size they are. I was hoping they'd be this size, but I don't, I don't know what I thought when I looked online. Everything looks different online. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's metallic-y, it's, I don't even know how you describe it, it's like a vinyl-y, like a vinyl-y kind of feel. It is all texture, so it's like somebody's put scales on there individually, obviously they haven't. Um, you could paint this probably if you wanted it in a different colour. I did try it very quickly with acrylic and it dried super, super matte. So if you're painting with acrylics, you're probably going to want to put like a clear coat of some kind over there so it, you get a bit of that gloss or sheen or metallicness back if that's what you're after. If you're matte then you, you're totally fine. Could have been that brand, not 100% sure. Fabric paint, maybe a better bet. Um, but yeah, see how you go. I, for this, I was hoping it'd have some stretch to it and it really doesn't. Um, it, yeah, it doesn't stretch really enough to warrant calling it a stretch 
but that's fine. I just figure use it how you would your brocades, your non stretch fabrics when you're making corsets and so forth. So I'll be doing the Aquawoman version of Mirror or Mirror, however you choose to say it. Um, I found that by accident on Google. I had no idea it existed. It's pretty much just like a like Aquaman's traditional gold and green suit. It looks like that, but on mirror. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that using this and some green fabric I also bought from Spotlight. So I'm hoping to record doing that as well so you guys can see the whole, whole process. Um, again, this one's got like a felt-like backing. Um, so yeah, this this would get warm. I can just tell straight away there'll be no breathability. You, you obviously can't see through it at all. Um, so yeah, another thing to bear in mind that you will get very, very warm very, very quickly. It does come in, I think, a silvery colour. So again, yeah, you should be able to paint it, no problems at all. Um, this would be great for covering armour. So with the project with the yellow fabric I showed before, I may use this as well for the armour. I think I'm gonna have a decent amount left. So that is the textured scale fabric. This is a the pleathery one, not the faux fur ones, because I think there's a faux fur that comes in this pattern as well. This is your vinyl pleathery fabric. And it's heavy too, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, so I think there is two more. Alright, so up next we have the basket weave, I'm not sure if it's called the apprentice weave, on the cosplay fabrics website. So that's the texture of it. And this stuff is just amazing. It's a lot weightier and drapier than I was expecting, but in a good way. I'm really happy that it is. It frays really nice at the edges. If you can, there we go, you can kind of see it there. Um, yeah, if you're going for total Kylo Ren screen accuracy, you would want the other version of this that's the coated version I believe but for most Kyrens, anything Star Wars related, anything with a cape, skirt, you could use this for anything. It's gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. It obviously doesn't stretch, it was never designed to. For me I will be making a Star Wars cape or a cloak, whatever you want to call it, for my Darth Talon cosplay. So she's not finished yet but I'm going to make the cloak first and I hear some people say she doesn't have a cloak in the comic book I saw her wear one even if it's just one page that's good enough for me to add a cloak to that cosplay and just to have something to make out of this because it is so nice so yeah I will hopefully record the video of that as well so even if Darth Talon is not finished you guys should be able to see a video of me using this then and the last fabric that I was sent was the carbon fiber fabric which if you can see the pattern it's pretty much like the carbon fine uh, carbon fiber vinyl but it's fabric which I think is actually much better and I have heard a lot of people asking if they think people could do a bodysuit with this in regards to the stretch now it will probably be a challenge but in all honesty I think you probably could it's like most of the other fabrics I've shown you today there's no stretch one way but you've got a decent amount of stretch the other way so yeah I think I don't know how it would go long term I don't know how the fabric would hold up long term but I don't see any reason if you can get the cut and the grain right that you should be able to make a bodysuit if you just keep in mind the direction it stretches for me I will be using this predominantly for armour so for those that follow me on the socials, so Facebook, Instagram and so forth, will know that I am sort of working on the PlayStation 4 version of Black Cat from the Spider-Man DLC. And those that, again, zoom in nice and close photo mode, will see that she's actually got carbon fibre bits on her suit and on her armour. So I'll be using it primarily for that. And then I'm also planning the Nova Widowmaker. And last time I did a normal Nova from Heroes of the Storm, I used the actual vinyl and I just think this will just work better I'm hoping. So I may use that on the armour as well. So I'd love to see somebody do a bodysuit out of this. Um, I think again you'd get warm because it's like a almost like a vinyl like coating 
on it. Um, and as soon as you have a coating on a fabric, you lose a little bit of purity. But I think it looks amazing. Like it's got a really cool carbon fiber pattern. So yeah, you could do armor. You can make tops, pants, coats, bodysuits. You do with having stretch to that degree in one way. You could probably get away with making quite a bit. So that is that. Um, See, so I just want to say again a massive, massive thank you to Spotlight for sending me these amazing fabrics and I absolutely cannot wait for you guys to see what I do with them. Um, I'm hoping to get the Coke done this month and hopefully mirror if I can get that sorted out really quick. Um, I'll try and record everything with making that I'm making using these so you guys can see how they work. Uh, log on to Spotlight the online website, see what you can get on there. If not, pop into your local store, see if they can get it in if they don't have it in store. Um, if there's any fabrics you want Spotlight to get in, email them, contact them, let them know because the more people that have interest, the more fabrics like this we can we can have in store, which is good for for everybody, even not just cosplayers. So yeah, huge thank you to Spotlight. I hope some of you guys are proud with what I make. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for what's come on that. And another bit of fabric I will show you even though you can't get it at Spotlight but it is part of the Cosplay Fabrics range. Purely because I've been asked a lot about it is the Indian Cardi. Now I bought a ton of this from the Cosplay Fabrics American website because they do ship worldwide so keep that in mind as well because uh, I needed it for my Aminet costume and I had a bucket ton of people asking me what it's like. So this is it in the black. Uh, you can see it's got a really cool texture. It's not quite as soft and drapey as I thought it would be, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's like a natural war fabric. So it's, it's good stuff. It, um, it's quite, it can be quite hard to stitch through because it's deceiving. It's not dead thick, like you can, you can see through it if you hold it up at the light, which you can kind of see the stairs. There you go. You can kind of see the stairs through this part of the screen here. Um, so when I did Aminet, I actually, I doubled it over purely because of the aesthetics and how it looked in game. So this is the Indian Cardi in the black. And I use this on the hood of Aminet. In the, they call it brown. I call it grey brown or grey, something like that. Um, this one actually feels softer, so I don't know if the different colours are their weave is slightly different, I'm not too sure, but this is a little bit softer and it's got amazing, amazing natural shades of colour through there, I believe. Um, this is pretty much the same what they used for Rey in her Jakku outfit from Star Wars. So those that are looking for relatively screen accurate fabric, if not screen accurate fabric, this is probably the way to go. I don't know how much Cosplay Fabrics has left. Um, so yeah, if, if you can't find it online, just contact them. But yeah, this is it in the brown grey colour. And then lastly, the white, or I don't know if it's called natural online, is this one. And this is what I used for the skirt panels of Aminet. So it's just like a bleached kind of off-white colour. This one feels the same as the black, not quite as soft as the grey brown one, but yeah, works the same way. So that's those ones purely for those that were asking me what it's like, who kind of were um and ahhing about buying it, but were a bit worried about forking out on that much shipping, especially because shipping obviously is from America to here in Australia, <clears throat> is quite pricey. So for those asking, I think it's totally worth it. If you wanted to find something like raw silk, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So this is a really great alternative and it's phenomenally good for Star Wars costumes. No stretch at all either way. So yeah if you're making anything fitted you're gonna need to have probably really solid mock-up in non-stretch fabric first. So that's the fabric guys. Um, hopefully I can have my YouTube channel starting up a bit better this year and I said that probably last year as well but I need to get back to just finishing editing my Alex Strasser time-lapse video, my Starfire one, which features the Ultra Cream and the Silver Feather from the Yaya Han cosplay range, both courtesy of Spotlight Stores again. 
Um, so I unfortunately have a very slow laptop. Um, and trying to do the voiceover and get it to play, it's just not that nice right now. But hopefully I can get them done sometime soon. I'll start doing makeup videos. Uh, I may start doing a little bit of fitness stuff. Uh, my video starts like an hour today, which is really cringing because it's so hot. Um, yeah, more time lapse videos. I'll probably have videos with my sister doing makeup on her, whacking her in costumes. You know, just having a laugh. Um, if I can figure out how to set up like a Twitch to stream when I'm crafting and things on there as well. And also I'm going to try and have a series where I buy some costumes that might be a bit more affordable and modify them because I want to focus on a few big costumes this year to have content coming in regularly. I'm just going to buy some and I record modifying them so that it can be more accurate to, you know, the, the screen, the game, whatever it's from. So hopefully that can help some of you guys out, especially those that don't want to make costumes from scratch, but you want to buy stuff, but you're worried if it's not good quality. Um, I have bought a costume from AliExpress, first time ever, I'm quite terrified, um, but excited because I've, I've heard good reports. I've seen people that I know, like friends of mine, have it and it looks amazing. So I'll probably do a video of that as well. And then if there's any mods that I have to make to it, I'll record those as well. So yes, hopefully I can have more on YouTube. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed and is just waiting for videos to come up and you know, there's not been much of anything. So yeah, hopefully that will change this year. I'm working on some tutorial type ebooks of costumes that I've made as well. So yeah, stay tuned. I'm hoping to achieve a bit more this year. Do more photo shoots with my sister and then get her to help people do their own photos. Um, so yeah, thanks to those who have stuck around thanks to those who have recently come on board if you haven't already and you want to you totally don't have to it's fine you can follow me on facebook instagram twitter everything anything um i'll link it in the description below so yeah anyway thank you so much for watching guys and see you in the next video bye